Minecraft Caves and Cliffs Part 2 is a beautiful update. Minecraft Caves and Cliffs Part 2 is a dangerous update. Just look at my suit. It is so beat up. We're gonna have to go ahead and get a new one. But the first thing that I wanna do today to make things a little bit safer is to build some bridges over these ravines that people keep falling in. So we're gonna team up with the Frog Queen and uh, take care of that. I put it very safely up here so you won't this, hurt this yourself, okay? Terrible block. It's safe. <laughs> I will forever um, hold a grudge against that block. <laughs> I have no good reason to. I just hate the block for no good reason. The Frog Queen thinks we're building bridges, but I just want to convince her that the stone cutter is not a good block. I'll, if this thing could work with wood and give me like eight trap doors at once for, for like a piece of wood, then it would be my favorite block in the game. Okay, I mean, I agree with that. <laughs> okay, she agrees. So we're off to a good start on the stone cutter convincing. Deep slate buttons? Is that a thing? I can't even remember. I don't think so. No. So that's another reason either. why the stone cutter is terrible. It doesn't give you deep slate buttons. Uh, okay. No. No. <laughs> She's resisting, but I think we're making progress. Let's talk about the safety of the bridge so she doesn't start getting suspicious of us. Um, but yes, this looks like a very safe bridge. I mean, yeah, I think so. Very trustworthy. Everyone's going to love it. No one's going to question its safety. That, that makes me feel good. Wait, are you being facetious? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I think we got her away from being suspicious of us. Let's go start on the other bridge and give her some space and time to think about all the things I've said about the stone cutter so far. All right. I've moved everything over. I left your, your stone cutter block alone as requested. Oh, why? Thank you, sir. Oh my God. You left the stone cutter here. Yeah. You told me to leave it alone. So I did. <laughs> I thought you were taking it over. <laughs> I meant leave it alone emotionally, but it's fine. I didn't mean abandon it in the air floating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So her attachment to the stone cutter is maybe a little bit stronger than I realized, but maybe we have made a little bit of progress. At the very least, we did make two very nice looking bridges. Let's go check them out. The first bridge we built here was mostly designed by the Frog Queen. She went for a very rustic look here, adding in some droopiness and broken up bits to the bridge. Spruce was the main palette here, but we mixed in some trap doors and campfires to help really enhance the rustic feel of it. And if you're not careful, you may find yourself walking right over the edge of the bridge and falling down to your death. The second bridge is right over here and was built mostly by me. I took a lot of inspiration from the Frog Queen's bridge, giving it a slight droop and trying to keep up with the rustic look. Once again, lots of spruce, tramp doors, and campfires, and this time a much safer bridge that you're not going to fall to your death on. With the two bridges taken care of and the area being a little bit safer to travel through now, I decided it was time to move out of the mountains and down here into the plains for our first starter base. I don't know what it is about the caves and cliffs update, but it made me just feel something about adventure and travel and kind of being like a little bit of a nomad. So I felt like a, a, a wagon was the perfect starter base, especially one that I was able to hide all this storage in with the walls here. We went with a pretty similar color palette that we used for our bridges as well. I was playing a lot of Stardew Valley, so I took some inspiration of the traveling merchant cart from that, as well as a post I found on Pinterest. I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out, but it's about to be nighttime and we need to find a bed. Ow. Run away. <laughs> run away. I'm not prepared for this. All right, we're just going to have to run, juke, and jive. Yeah, but I think right up here by Ulraf's trader tent, we have a couple of beds. I think there's like a red bed and a yellow bed over here. Or some creepers. There's a purple bed. Um, Yeah, this is no good. <laughs> this is not safe. Yes, there is. There's a yellow bed inside of storage. Perfect. Oh, hello, invisible spider. I don't see you. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. There we go. I had a little bit of trouble with the roof. I couldn't quite remember exactly how I do it, but eventually I got it. And then I had to keep dealing with creepers. I was worried that spider was, uh, uh, oh, hello cave. Let's just fill this in the best we can with the creepers dealt with. I got back to the car, adding in some wheels. So it was no longer floating there. And then chat started making fun of it, calling it a traveling puppet show. 
You can do that here. You can stand inside and be like, oh, hello, I'm Bowtie Daniels, and I'm here to be your puppet master. Ah! All right, enough of the jokes. We're back to working on the wagon. We're adding in a cart in the back section here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this area. So if you have any ideas, put them in the comments down below. And with that, our starter base is complete. There are a few things I also added into the build, not in the time lapse. So let me go ahead and show you around. First off, we did a little bit of texturizing and throwing in some oak logs and a bit of polished deep slate as well as deep slate bricks in here. We also did an interior. We used some green moss carpets here on the floor. We also did some of the uh, the spore blossoms hanging. And what I did not know you could do, but just learned while doing this is you can actually hang them from chains. That's super cool. Yeah, so I wanted the interior to be very green, very lush, very alive. So we got a couple of bushes in here. There's a potted azalea plant over here as well as back here and a couple of paintings just to complete the look. We also have all these barrels on the side of the walls that we're able to use for our storage. So it's a nice way to get space in here for storing things without having to take up any of the interior room. Look, I got so much room for activities inside here now. The other thing you may have noticed is this. This is my horse. My horse is amazing. I gave him a name. His name is Sir Raisins. So yeah, this is a small little stables that I've put together. I've used this design in a couple of different places before, but the thing that's really nice about this design is this right here, you can walk in and out, but for whatever reason, the horse doesn't know it can walk in and out. You can also ride in and out, no problem, without hitting your head on anything and taking any damage. So that is a nice little tip for you if you want to make a stables of your own to keep your horses. We also have a second stall right here. I'm thinking we're gonna put a donkey or a mule in here and that way we have transportation with storage built right in and it's raining the other thing you may notice that i am fully decked out in diamond gear now we had a lot of fun doing that on stream we traveled out a couple hundred blocks and the first thing i did was jump into this big old cave mined up a bunch of coal we got about two stacks there wasn't too long before we found our first bit of diamonds we continued forward and ran into this dungeon here where we got some pretty good loot, like this Looting 3 book. Continuing forward, we explored more of these beautiful caves. I just cannot get over how wonderful and how amazing these caves are in the Caves and Cliffs update. We got more diamonds and then some more diamonds and we came into this even bigger cave where a couple of zombies decided to come in and try and ruin my day, but we made some pretty quick work of them. From there, we moved on, explored a couple more caves before we finally came to another dungeon and then this happened. Should be enough light, anything good in here? <gasps> Woo, check it out. We got an enchanted golden apple. After finding the golden apple, we stumbled into a mine shaft that had a whole lot of diamonds. There were so many diamonds in there that somehow I completely forgot to even pick this one up right here. So go ahead and leave an F in the comments for this forgotten diamond, you'll be missed. With that many diamonds, I decided it was finally time to get out of the cave and start making my gear and then tragedy struck. With that explosion, I lost all my diamonds, but I did keep my looting three book and golden apple. Next day, we returned to the caves equipped with a fortune three pickaxe and we brought an ender chest along with us this time so we can store our goods along the way. We quickly got to mining some copper because we started off in this awesome dripstone cave. We got a whole lot of that. And then we moved on to deeper levels where we started our diamond mining and that was doing really good with the fortune three pickaxe. Uh, we did find this piece of lapis and I decided to try the 117 trick for finding diamonds. Uh, unfortunately, that did not really work out for us, but we did come across this awesome mine shaft where we did find plenty of diamonds. So maybe the trick does still work. I don't know, but there are more diamonds to be found over here. And then we moved on and found this dungeon. Unfortunately, this dungeon wasn't great loot, but we did have fun in the next dungeon that we encountered here because it was a double dungeon with zombies and skeletons. I just kind of sat there and watched them fight back and forth. Had a good time watching that. I do think the zombies won this battle. We moved on from the mine shaft and stumbled across this amazing aquifer. I spent a lot of time swimming through here, just having fun, enjoying and exploring it. But let me tell you, swimming through this aquifer was such a good way to find diamonds. Almost around every corner I turned, there was a diamond. I picked up those, I would turn around and then there were more diamonds. And then I would swim a little bit further and guess what? There were more diamonds. It was such a good place. Uh, the aquifer led to this big old cave where I took out my spyglass and decided to scope around to search for some more diamonds and plan out strategy of attack. I used my end chest to drop off all the goods I collected so far to make sure that if I was facing any danger, I would not lose anything. Hopped down in here, had to fight one-on-one -on -one with a spider for a little bit, took care of that guy, no problem. A skeleton came up, was like, yo, what'd you do to my spider friend? I'm like, hey, I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. Then a creeper got involved, like, don't you talk to skeleton that way? Well, I tricked the creeper and made him blow up the skeleton. Collected some more diamonds, and then tragedy again. <laughs> wow. 
Since I was smart and put all my diamonds in the ender chest along the way, I was able to get fully kitted up and start enchanting. And right off the bat, I was off to a good start with this. Um, we'll just do unbreaking and see what happens. Hey! Continue enchanting the rest of my gear. Got a few good rolls here and there. Nothing too extraordinary until I got to my sword. It gave me Bane of Arthropods. You know I grind some of that thing. I rid of it so quick before I went ahead and re-rolled it and got something much better this time around. While I was blabbering about mining and getting diamonds, something terrible has happened. I, I hope you're ready for this because it is pretty disgusting in here. I've been stone cuttered. All over the interior of my fabulous wagon here, we've gotten stone cutters. And it's just not the inside either. Coming back here, we got stone cutters all over the cart part of my wagon. I'm pretty sure I know who this is and we shall have our revenge. So we got the stone cutters all cleaned up from our base and I thought it was only proper if we disposed of them in a nice scenic location. There we go, no more stone cutters, problem solved. And at the beginning of the episode here, our suit did get pretty beat up and I think it's time to do something about that. Let's go ahead and get that fixed. If you forgot what the suit looked like, well, take a good look because this is the last time you're gonna see it like this. Let's go get cleaned up. So a huge thank you out to Zombini who made this skin for me. If you're looking for a new Minecraft skin, definitely go check them out. I'll have a link to their Twitter in the video description, but let's take a look at the new skin. So yeah, here's the new skin. I'm really happy with how it came out. I tried to stick with something that was kind of similar to the suit by keeping the black jacket on here. And of course we went back to using the purple bow tie. And the main theme of the suit is I just wanted to go with something that felt a little bit more perfect for caves and cliffs. Something that was a little bit more adventury and, and exploring and rugged, you know, a suit gets all beat up and, and tattered. So that wouldn't really fit in here. And I also thought this was a good time to go ahead and, and update some things. I made that skin, what, four or five years ago and the face is <laughs> kind of janky, so. Uh, I thought it was a good time to also just update the face and then the hair and then the beard and everything else on the skin. So I'm really happy with it. I hope, whoa, grass there. I hope you all like it too. Let me know. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and start plotting my revenge for the stone cutter prank. But if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Please let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe till next time, everyone have a good one. Peace out.